bit high spirited, but they do their work, and I think you'll find this whole school runs very smoothly. <coughs> what? Here is a boy who has omitted to rule up at the end. Is this your paper, Smeaton? Yes, sir. And what do we always say about ruling off, Smeaton? Tidy work means a tidy mind, sir. That is correct. And to make sure you don't forget it, I suggest you practice ruling off after school. You can rule me a line a mile long. I have previously calculated, purely from vital curiosity, that you will require exactly 137 sheets of live paper, which will no doubt see fit to supply yourself. Mr. Nichols, I believe we've already discussed the curriculum. Try to continue with the lesson. Miss Grant will show you the book covered. Class, I don't want to hear another sound from you until Mr. Nichols gets back. <laughs> I have previously calculated, purely from moral curiosity, that if you lay all three of relatives end to end, you could wrap up exactly one sheet of blind paper. <laughs> Oh, my. 
sake of your professional reputation, that you were forced momentarily to leave the room. Or that you're engaged in a rather dramatic reconstruction of the Battle of Waterloo. As you can imagine, Headmaster, I find it impossible to conduct my class with this pandemonium going on next door. You see, Mr. Nichols, you're making it very difficult for other members of the staff. But it was just a bit of high spirits. We're just getting started. Well, in that case, it's just as well I interrupted before you finished. What possible justification can there be for this conduct, Nichols? Well, actually, Headmaster, we were singing. What? <coughs> singing. Making music. As far as I am aware, Mr. Nichols, this is an English lesson. You're supposed to be doing Nicholas Nickleby. Exactly. We were doing Nicholas Nickleby. But the music. Then you would better explain yourself, Nichols. Well, um, we were uh, making Nicholas Nickleby into a musical. When you were kids, we were just about to go to parts, weren't we? Yeah. Yes.
200 pounds. I got that at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning and I've got only for three. How old are you? A little, sir. You've been living soft, double beef bound. No matter, you'll soon knock that out of your dock boys' hall. Now get back in the corner and bang at you. Three boys. Three on the resort. Three twos is six. Sixty pounds! What's come of all the boys? What's parents got in their heads? What does it all mean?
that Mrs. Squiz, Lucas' mother, to them all. And she will know what's best for them at North Boys Hall. a pleasant thing to know. No letters sent back home, except at Christmas time, and then a circular to say they're feeling fine, cause we do things for them, sir. Believe me, this is true, that even half the mother's going would not do. Home's a home from home to all who come to me. How could we live without them? Our world revolves around them. We've got the youngsters into rest at heart. Yes, we've got the youngsters into rest at heart. I'm not the boy's real father. Their mother is my wife. Our school will solve your problems and we'll give you peace for life. The prospects of them leaving us are very, very low. And that's of course a pleasant thing to know. Because we got the youngsters into rest and march, you know. We seem to have been treated as they are at home. How could we live without them? Our world revolves around them. We've got the youngsters into rest. Dry, close and warm tea, 
offered him every night and morning when he couldn't swallow anything. I planned him in his bedroom on the very night he died. The best dictionary sent up for him to lay his head upon. I don't regret it though. It is a pleasant thing to reflect that one did one's duty by him. This gentleman, sir, is a parent who was kind enough to compliment me upon the course of education adopted at Dock Boys Hall, which is situated, sir, at the delightful little village of Dock Boys, near Gregor Ridge in Yorkshire. We use a clothed, boarded, booked, washed, furnished with pocket money provided with... Yeah, 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 yes, sir, we know all that. That is in the advertisement. You're very right, sir. It is in the advertisement. And in a matter of fact, besides, I feel bound to assure you, sir, and I am proud to have the opportunity of assuring you, that I find Mr. Squares a gentleman, highly virtuous, exemplary, well-educated, undoubted, and... Oh, Mr. Sir, excuse me, sir, I, I make no doubt of that. No doubt of the law. Ah, but Mr. Squares, suppose we come to business now? With all my heart, sir. Never postpone business is the very first lesson we teach our commercial pupils. Master Molly, my dear. Always remember that, do you hear? Yes, sir. You recollect what it is, does he? Quite sure, gentlemen. Never. Very good, go on. Never. Very good indeed, yes! Perform business? Uh, never perform business. Very well, sir. You and I will perform a little of our own business, by and by. And, uh, just now, Mr. Scrooby Band transact our own business, perhaps, if you please. <coughs> well, it is brief enough, and I hope easily concluded. You, uh, you advertise for able assistance, sir. Slice and serve. And, uh, you really want one? Certainly. Where is it? My nephew Nicholas, apart from school, very little note there commencing in his head. And nothing commencing in his pockets. <laughs> Nicholas, just the name you want? I'm afraid. I'm afraid you and nephew won't quite suit me. Ah, yes, I am. I don't know that, Mr. Squares. Don't be down, sir. You'll be teaching young noblemen at Doc Boys Hall in less than a week's time. That is, of course. Unless, of course, this gentleman is a, a little more obstinate than I take him to be. Why? I fear, sir, that, that you object to my youth and to my not being a master of arts. Well, the absence of a college degree is an objection. Look here, sir. I'll put this matter in true light in a matter of two seconds. You'll have the goodness. This is a boy, or a youth, or a young man, or whatever you want to call him. Well, that I see. Yes, so do I. His father is dead. He is wholly ignorant of the world. Has no resources whatever. And uh, wants something to do. Now I, in my infinite wisdom, recommend him to this splendid establishment of yours as an opening which will lead to a good fortune. If, of course, he turns to proper account. Now, do you see that? I do, of course. Um, Mr. Squares. Yes? Well, so I have a few words for you, sir. By all means. The, uh, the boy Dorker died when, Mr. Squares? Why, just after Christmas. Exactly, Mr. Squares. And, um, how many years, Mr. Squeers, was it before I was informed of his death? Years, Mr. Nickley? Um, 
years, Mr. Squeeze. Your uncle's recommendation has done it. They're not to be accepted. Oh, yeah. I think that can be safely assumed, don't you, Mr. Squeeze? Your argument, sir, was very convincing. <laughs> Mr. Nickleby, the coach leaves at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Now, you'll be here at quarter before and don't be late.
Midland. The wind blows this the way through the upper man on his legs.
Don't be a little heart to think it's helping. Say, see little brother heavy go, sir, all the better. Use it up his energy. Scott's in getting up to a bit, sir. Thank you. 
boys all. You appreciate Mr. Nickleby that the boys love their food, don't you boys? Oh, yes, sir, I've been saying they cannot get enough of it. Oh, very right you are too, sir. Very greedy little types, some of them are. You'll observe, my dear sir, the looks of anticipation amongst their little faces as my dear wife plays the evening meal. Uh, exactly what are they to it, sir? Why, milk, sir. Milk and what, sir? Milk and water, sir. And two penny worth of what would you beg of me? <laughs> but I am the inquiry. Ah, yes, richness. Think of the many beggars and orphan super boys that would be glad of this. A shocking thing, hunger is Mr. Nickleby. Very shocking, sir. Right. When I get the word, the first point each line shall form a circle and come and get his evening meal. Ready? <laughs> Thank you. 
me. Why does he say, has nothing been heard of me? Why? Because he's been here all these years and no money paid out for the first six months. Nor no notice given, nor no clue to me by as to who me belongs. It's a fine sort of thing that I should have to clothe and feed a boy like that and never hope to get a penny for it. Oh, it's tender as a lamb, my love. An uncommon juicy meal, that. Why don't you join me? No, I couldn't eat a mortal. But what will the young man take, my dear? Whatever he likes as present. <laughs> Smite! Can't you hurry, boy! Well, Mr. Nutboy, what's it going to be? A little about Fanny's pie? Oh, uh, yes, please. That's a little, because I'm... Uh, I'm not very hungry. Well, she's a pig in that pie. You're not hungry, isn't it? Well, how about a bit of meat? Whatever you say, it's all the same to me. Uncommon juicy steak, that. Yes, well, it was a prime beef, that. I'm not tasted like a pig on purpose for... Oh, on purpose for what? Not for the boys. No, on purpose for you against the two campaigns. You didn't think I'd make a mistake as that, did you? Oh, upon my word, my dear. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you, Mr. Nickleby. You seem somewhat disturbed, sir. Out of it. There are no secrets here at Doc Boys Hall. I'm merely reflecting, sir, that while we sit, sit here and eat, there are so many who go without. our discipline here at Dock Boys Hall. Our society is a privileged one, and our young charges will one day drive to hold privileged positions themselves. But before they can hold a wise thing, they must learn to see it in action. That is a good domestic economy. Well, boy, what brings you here? Please, sir, I've brought the ale. Oh, so you've brought the ale, have you? You've been a long time. It's funny. 
Cause the only one to make it will be 